Motor City, man. This is where it's at. This is where it all started. This track's been here since 1953. It's really a, a cool track because it's small like a bowl. A lot of famous drivers have came out of here through the years. You got some of the best race car drivers in the world right here tonight. At the intersection, here we go. They're going to be on the hammer now. Tonight is a very exciting night. Tonight is Flat Rock Speedway, night of destruction. Ah! Figure eight racing is hugely popular here. Very excited for the kids. Ah! Great family fun. My favorite thing is the boat. Kids love the school buses and stuff. Well, is everybody else ready? That's the question. So are you ready? Yeah. Who's ready to sing the school bus song with me, huh? Well, when I normally ride a school buses, it's just laughing. You can talk to your buddies and stuff, but tonight you can. Wheels on a bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. And round. You don't get to ride on the bus, you get to watch them. And you kind of wish that's how some days you go to school. Wish me luck. Bring my power anyway. If it happens in real life, it would be very scary. I don't know who came up with it, but man, it's a good idea the first time they asked me, you want to drive a bus to the intersection? I said, heck yeah, I do. Oh, man! I'm Terry Smith. I drive the number 38 school bus. Look out! He said, look out! Look out! Terrible turnover, Terry. <laughs> figure eight, you're going to crash in the middle, and people seem to like that. They love to see them big buses crash. It's funny to see them crash. That's what we do. We, we tear them up. Yeah, we boom. We're going to leave and make it spectacular. How'd it go? Absolutely fabulous. We had a lot of speed and no brakes, and that makes for fun. Knocked him over. There's no slowing down when you know you're going over with no brakes, you're going over. Oh well, yeah, I heard a big boom. When you hit somebody, it just echoes in there. I've been around the racetrack my whole life. School buses are my bull's favorite part because there's a lot of carnage. Oh, look out! What does it take? I question myself all the time. It's got to be a little crazy, I guess. It's not crazy so much as it is fun. <laughs> oh, big time flip. Oh, my God. It went over big time. I saw some Come wicked on. figure eight, and I've never seen anything like it in my life. I like where stunt men, you know? <laughs> School buses, crisscross, crash, <laughs> flip, flip, crisscross, crash. Never seen anything like it. Come across the line, upside down. That's the way to do it. Can't wait to come back. <laughs> Detroit and music are kind of synonymous. It's one of the most famous music cities in the world. It's in the water. It's in the blood. It's it's Detroit. So a trumpet is this, this call of, you know, I'm here. It kind of demands, I'm here, and you got to listen to me. What's it like playing the trumpet? Personally, for me, a lot of times, I feel like I don't have a lot of power. And then, like, when I play the horn, I feel like I have so much power. And there's nothing like it when you're feeling it. This decal is so cool. I never see horns like this anymore. There's a certain love for old horns that we all have. While I was standing outside, I heard the music floating out, and I came in, and Dave was playing There'll Never Be Another You, which is a song that I actually remember my dad playing. So it was a chill down your spine kind of moment. I'm Amy Roberge Heitman. I am the daughter of Dick Roberge, and I'm here with his horn today at the Willis Show Bar. I just feel like it's full circle to be here. This was the horn 
that he would have been playing when he played here at the Willis Show Bar. Uh, cool is a. Uh, is is, doesn't do it justice. Having that trumpet back here and having some of our regular players on it, it's just, it, it's, a, it's pretty amazing, you know? You get goosebumps. When you play someone else's horn, you're playing everyone else who's played that horn. It sounded really wonderful to hear you play it. Thank you, thank you. If we think uh, people come and hang out in favorite places, you know, maybe the, the souls of all those old jazz musicians are hanging out here, but I know when my siblings and I were here, we certainly felt my dad's presence. And it's so cool to see this horn and hear it being played here, where he played it. So if someone keeps playing it, then the legacy will live on. That's a piece of the architecture of this place. It's cool to sort of, you know, put to play what I play and do what I do with it and add whatever stamp I did, be a part of the person who played the horn and, you know, passing it on. This was passed along to him. My dad's just one in a line of many. And then you think about this place and how this atmosphere is a place that many musicians have played in and has resonated with them. And now that it's been restored and it's so incredibly fabulous, that legacy is gonna continue and that music's gonna still be played. And that's a wonderful tribute. <laughs>
that's my boy Fritz. You know what I mean? It's just a personal connection that me and him got. I mean, I work with him a lot. He trusts me, I trust him. So riding on this horse, riding like on air, because he's a Tennessee walker. Oh, I think it's nice. He don't be disturbing the traffic. Yeah. It's real nice. Well, for the most part, I mean, I like to ride him on the streets of Detroit. The kids like it. I think you know? it's crazy. You think it's crazy? Nah. <laughs> out a public street, be out, okay. be out in the woods on a farm. Yeah, but he's straight. I mean, it's just freedom, I guess. And how do the horses uh, handle kind of being in this atmosphere? Well, he's he's good, man. I mean, he really trains. He's really broke. I mean, nothing really scares him. Yeah. Like not too much of nothing. Loud cars, balloons, anything. Nothing scares him. Kids, cars, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a, that's a big baby. That's a pretty baby. That's your oh, that's one of them babies. Can I have a picture? Yeah. Hey little boy. Hey! Oh you pretty. Hey man! I'm about to touch him. Where can touch him at? Touch me. Hi baby. Oh you pretty, I love horses. Oh yeah, he like coming to the city. I mean, this is where we get our workout at. The trails and stuff, that's kind of boring to me. Honestly, I really do it for to see the reaction yeah. in the kid's face when they see the horse. That'd be like, that's what make it kind of worth it, for real, for real. Look at the horse, Brooklyn. I mean, it feel good when you see their mind blown because they can actually see the horse, touch the horse, get on the horse. What do I think when I see the horse? Yeah. Oh my God, he's beautiful. And most importantly, I love it because the kids get to interact with the horses and you don't see this nowhere else but on Seven Mile. They Only on Seven Mile. And look, the kid loves him. Go ahead and pet him, Brooklyn. I love it. It's a real horse <laughs> in Detroit City. Yeah, that real horsepower. So long, fella. If these walls could talk, there's stories, yeah. And this place has history. Stars, musicians. <laughs> called the Bluebird. The Bluebird was known everywhere. And it was the home of jazz on the west side of Detroit. People were proud. I was at the Bluebird on said day. Oh yeah, very special. Very, very special. Cause this thing is ah, yeah, ha. There we go. <laughs> it was beautiful. The sound was beautiful. The neighborhood was beautiful. I've been trying to get in here, man, for like 16 years, man. We went up there. Yeah. Well, we went up in this this crawl space here. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Hmm. Tables, chairs, stage was over there. If I recall, I thought it was right, the stage was right here. That's that's where I recall, and I've actually been on that stage. Used to rock. This place used to rock. And I was able to do some, do a couple performances in here, and it was just magical. Pretty girls. <laughs> yeah, the neighborhood was known for gorgeous women. <laughs> Right now, the place looks kind of like an archaeological dip. It does have good bones, so I think the bones are good. So if the bones are good, there's something that can be done here. So even though we can see daylight through the roof, there's a lot of crumpled paint on the floor. There's hope for this structure. Today, I was working with the great Deshaun Jones, Wonderful young saxophone player, Deshaun and I worked together in the Marcus Belgrave group. We were playing Shiny Stockings by the great uh, saxophonist Frank Foster, who I actually had a chance to perform with, and Frank was fabulous, and so it was really great to bring Frank's music into this area and try to kind of christen it with some live music. <laughs> Detroit Sound Conservancy is renovating this entire building, not only as a space to perform, but also a space that will also enliven this community. Oh man, it is just so important. It is so important. It's gonna bring back uh, people. It's gonna bring back finance. It's gonna just bring back uh, vitality. We need it. The city oh, needs it. It does, and this neighborhood really needs it. Bring back the fun, the beauty, camaraderie, friendliness. Very special. Just, I'm glad that it's coming back. I'm excited about this bluebird thing. 
I could just see uh, the stars returning, mm -hmm. the neighborhood revitalizing. And I'm, I'm loving it. Detroit is known for the grit. It is known for that hard, tough, and rough persona. It's not necessarily known for fine, precious metal jewelry. However, like with my personal collection, there's some uh, texture into the pieces that resemble, you know, my experience growing up in Detroit. It's a beautiful juxtaposition that I think is honest, it's authentic, and it is a full representation of me. I am Charisma Eve. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Casting Day Chrysopia, a Detroit jewelry manufacturing facility. Zenephora is my brand. I make jewelry objects that are more like talismans. Um, and these pieces are inspired by the curiosities of the ancient world, as well as visions of the future. I remember as a young girl growing up and still trying to teach myself how to do jewelry, I learned of the wabi-sabi philosophy, which is finding beauty in ruin or finding the perfection in imperfection. I guess people think that you know, you're only able to make beautiful things if you're exposed to beautiful things. That is not true. I'm an example of that. It didn't come from a place where I was exposed to all of this exuberant, like fashion and beautiful like object in the area that I grew up in, which was Brightmore. And I think that's why a lot of people can connect to it because it is, you know, inspirational toward the future, but also a homage to, you know, the the fight that we had to endure to even get here. You know, I give my companies very difficult names to pronounce. <laughs> For a reason, they have meanings behind them. Xenophora actually means the carrier of strange or foreign objects. And casting de chrysopia means to make into gold by way of casting. That alchemy of transmutating something to gold is less of like the actual act of it, but more of the act of transforming your life into something that is divine, something that is special, and something that has value. So I remind myself every day that I'm, I'm transforming my life into gold. And I look at my experience growing up in Brightmore as that lead. You know, the alchemist's journey, their life journey was to turn that lead into gold. That's what I want to do for myself. And that's what I want to do for Detroit.